point to negative feedback mechanism. So these are the example of negative feedback mechanism. The first one is blood glucose regulation. So, second one is the thermoregulation. And the third one is osmoregulation of human. So blood glucose regulation. So glucose is referred as the major fuel for cellular respiration and the key source of carbon skeleton for biosynthesis. So our source of energy comes from the glucose. All right, so blood glucose concentration is regulated by negative feedback mechanism. So normally our uh, normal blood glucose concentration is maintained at 7 to 100, 70 to 110 milligram per 100 ml of blood. So this relies largely on the antagonistic effect of insulin and glucagon. All right. Uh, so liver is a site for insulin and glucagon action. All right. So both glucagon and insulin are produced in the pancreas. So the one that produces glucagon is the alpha cells islets of Langerhans, while the one that produces insulin is called beta cells islets of Langerhans. So you can see here, this is the islets of Langerhans. So this is the alpha and beta cell, the, the cells that are actually involved with the production of insulin and glucagon. All right, mechanism of action of insulin and glucagon. So the normal blood glucose level is 70 to 100 milligram glucose per 100 ml of blood. If let's say the blood glucose level falls, uh, just like after fasting, it will cause the alpha cells, islets of Langerhans, to secrete glucagon into the blood. So glucagon is then uh, promotes the breakdown of glycogen in the liver and the release of glucose into the blood. So this conversion of glycogen into glucose is referred as glyco genolysis. So the glucagon will cause this um, process to increase. All right. So when this thing happens, it will cause the blood glucose level to rise. At the same time, it will also increase the conversion of amino acid and also fats to glucose. All right. So this help to increase the blood glucose level and then it returns back to normal. However, if the blood glucose level rise, just like after eating, it will cause the beta cells, islets of Langerhans to secrete insulin into the blood. So what happened is, insulin will enhance the transport of glucose into body cells, and it will stimulate the liver to store glucose as glycolytin. That means it will inhibit glyco genolysis all right and at the same time it also inhibit the conversion of um, fats and also amino acid to glucose all right so all this action will cause the blood glucose level to fall and then return the blood glucose levels to normal again Thermoregulation. So homeostatic process for thermoregulation involves form, function, and behavior. So it's a process by which animals maintain their body temperature within a normal range. So importance at high tem body temperature, all right, it will reduce the efficiency of the enzymatic reaction. So uh, at low body temperature, it will cause the metabolic activities to slow down. So it is very important uh, for the um, living organism to maintain their body temperature. Endothermy and ectothermy. Right. Heat for thermoregulation can come from either internal metabolism or external environment. All right. Ectotherms tolerate greater variation in internal temperature, while endotherms are active at a greater range of external temperature. That means ectotherms are able to change their body temperature according to the external environment while endotherms maintain its body temperature although their external uh, environment the temperature of external external environment change endothermic animals generate heat by metabolism 
So examples of endothermic uh, animals uh, include humans, other mammals, birds, few non-avian reptiles, fishes, and many insect species. Alright, so these animals maintain their stable body temperature even in the large uh, temperature fluctuation in the environment. As example, in the cold environment, endotherm will generate enough heat to keep its body warmer than its surrounding. While in hot environment, all right, they will have the mechanism to cool up their body and having them to withstand the heat loss. All right, so we can see that endothermy is more energetically expensive than uh, ectotherm. Why? Because they need to consume more food compared to ectotherms in order to increase their metabolic reaction and uh, in order to maintain the constant body temperature. Alright, so this is one example of endotherm animals. Alright, so this is the great blue heron. Alright, so normally it will spread its wing in order to expose more of its body to the sun warmth. Alright, so they regulate their body temperature physiologically. Alright, ectothermic animals gain most of their heat from their external sources. Alright, they do not generate enough heat for thermal regulation. So usually they tolerate larger fluctuation in their internal environment. Uh, so many of them will adjust their body temperature by behavioral means. That means they will have a different behavior in order to maintain this body uh, temperature. As example, um, uh, a few of the animals might be seeking out shade or basking in the sun. All right, and then ectotherms normally will uh, consume much less food compared to the endotherm. Why? Because um, their heat source is largely environmental, so they doesn't depend on the metabolism of their body. All right, so from the description of ectotherms and endotherms, we can refer that all ectotherms are poikilotherms. Uh, which is an animal whose body temperature varies with its environment and all endotherm are homeotherms which is an am animal that has a relatively constant body temperature so this is one example of ectotherm animals which is the iguana it increases its body temperature by sunning itself balancing heat loss and gain so thermal regulation depends on the animal's ability to control the exchange of heat with its environment. So normally, organism will exchange heat by four physical processes. Number one is conduction. Number two is convection. Number three is radiation. Number four is evaporation. So conduction is referred as the direct transfer of heat between molecules of object in contact with each other. All right, as example, a lizard sits on a hot rock. All right, number two, convection is referred as the transfer of heat by the movement of air or liquid past the surface. As example, when a breeze contribute to the heat loss from a lizard dry skin. All right, number three, radiation is the emission of electromagnetic wave by all object warmer than absolute zero. All right, as example, a lizard will absorb heat from the sun and then it will radiate a small uh, amount of energy to the surrounding air. And then last one is evaporation. Evap evaporation is the removal of heat from the surface of a liquid that is losing some of its molecule as gas. Alright, so as example, evaporation of water from a lizard moist surface to the environment as the cooling effect. Alright, so there are six general adaptations to help animals thermoregulate. Number one is insulation. Number two is circulatory adaptation. Number three, cooling by evaporative heat loss. Number four is behavioral responses. Number five, adjusting metabolic heat production. Number six is physiological thermostat. Number one, insulation. So major thermoregulatory adaptation in mammals and birds. So it reduces heat flow between an animal and its environment. So source of insulation, uh, it might be fur or feathers. This can be found in most land mammals and birds. And then uh, normally they will raise their fur or feathers due to the cold temperature. Another source of insulation is fats. All right, normally can be found in human. 
So we rely on fat for insulation. All right. Uh, the third source of insulation is the blubber or is referred as layers of fat. This can be found in marine ma mammals, especially whales and walruses. So with this blubber, uh, their body core temperature can be maintained at 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. Number two, circulatory adaptation. So regulation of blood flow near the body surface significantly affect the thermoregulation. So many endotherms and some ectotherms can alter the amount of blood flowing between the body core and the skin via um, vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Another one is through counter current exchange. In vasodilation, blood flow in the skin will increase then facilitate the heat loss by radiation, conduction, and convection. This is due to the widening of superficial blood vessels. In vasoconstriction, blood flow in the skin will decrease, thus lowering the heat loss. This is due to the decreasing in the diameter of the superficial blood vessel. Countercurrent exchange. So in many birds and mammals, so reducing heat loss from the body relies on the countercurrent exchange mechanism, all right, which is the transfer of heat between the fluids that are flowing in opposite direction. All right, so the arrangement of the blood vessels allow for the countercurrent exchange to occur. So in this countercurrent ex heat ex exchanger, arteries and veins are located adjacent to each other. So let's say this is the artery. All right, and this is the vein. All right, so they are located adjacent to each other. So because blood flows through the arteries and veins are in opposite direction, so this arrangement will allow the heat exchange to be remarkably efficient. So warm blood passes through the artery, will transfer the heat to the colder blood in the vein. So this is the example of the countercurrent heat exchanger in Canada Goose and also bottlenose dolphin. So you can see here how the blood flow in artery are in opposite direction with the blood flow in vein. So you can see um, how the temperature of the blood in artery decreases because normally artery will bring a warmer blood. So as it goes down, the, blood, the temperature of the blood decreases because it passes the heat to a colder uh, blood in vein. So as the blood flows in vein, all right, you can see how the temperature increases. This is due to the gaining of heat from the artery. So same thing happens in the uh, bottlenose dolphin. Number three, cooling by evaporative heat loss. So many types of animals, uh, example birds and many mammals, will lose their heat through evaporation of water in sweat. So terrestrial animals lose water by evaporation from their skin and also respiratory surface. All right. So many terrestrial animals have sweat gland, all right, controlled by the nervous system. Example panting increases the cooling effect in birds and many mammals. Number four, behavioral responses. So both endotherms and ectotherms use their behavioral responses to control body temperature. As you can see in the picture, uh, honeybees, normally in cold weather, they will increase the heat production by huddled together, thereby retaining the heat. While in hot weather, they will cool the hive by transporting the water. In the second picture shows the dragonfly that have the obelisk posture to minimize the amount of body surface that is exposed to the sun. Another example is frog. Normally, frog will move to cool area or turn in another direction when they feel hot. Number five, adjusting metabolic heat production. Endotherms control heat production through thermogenesis to match changing rates of heat loss. Thermogenesis is increased by the muscle activities, which refer to moving or shivering. Example, a few large reptiles will become endothermic in particular circumstances. Uh, as example, female Burmese python 
will maintain their body temperature roughly 6 degrees Celsius above that of the surrounding air during the egg incubation. Alright, another example, flying endothermic insects such as bees and moths will have the capacity to elevate their body temperature. For non-shivering thermogenesis, it does not involve any physical action. In some mammals, certain hormones can cause mitochondria to increase their metabolic activity and produce heat. As example, some mammals have a tissue called brown fat, specialized for rapid heat production. Even human, we human, have this brown fat around our neck. Alright, together, non-shivering and shivering thermogenesis enable the mammals and birds to increase their metabolic heat production by as much as 5 times to 10 times. 6. Physiological thermostat. Regulation of body temperature in humans and mammals is brought about by a complex system based on feedback mechanism. So sensors for thermoregulation is concentrated in the hypothalamus where a group of nerve cells function as a thermostat. So thermostat refer or it will respond to the body temperature outside the normal range by activating mechanism that will promote uh, either heat loss or gain. Alright, so in this example, the normal body temperature is around 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. If the body temperature increases, such as when exercise or um, in a hot surrounding, thermostat in the hypothalamus will activate the cooling mechanism. So this will cause the blood vessels in the skin to dilate, capillaries fill with the warm blood, and heat radiates from the skin surface. At the same time, the sweet the sweat gland will secrete the sweat, which then evaporate and then uh, cools down the body. So all this action will cause the body temperature to decrease and returns back to normal. However, when the body temperature decreases, like when we are in a cold surrounding, thermostat in the hypothalamus will activate the warming mechanism. So this will cause the blood vessel in the skin to constrict so it will divert the blood from the skin to the deeper tissue and, the, and reduce the heat loss from the skin surface. So at the same time, skeletal muscle will rapidly contract and then causes to shiver, which then generates heat. So this action will cause the body temperature to increase again and returns back to normal.